So we're into the end of organic chemistry. Polymers are a theme. So it's a reaction type, but we're not going to have the same type of naming rule. These are going to be incredibly big uh, structures. Uh, one bit of vocabulary is we're not going to use the word reactants. We're going to call what we have at the beginning monomers or individual mono meaning one. One piece that is going to ultimately build up too many tens of thousands or hundreds of pieces. The products, we won't call products, we'll call them polymers or many of those individual units. We're not going to be able to draw the complete structures. We're going to need to show repeating patterns. The molar mass of many polymers can be in the millions of grams per mole. So they're incredibly long, they are flexible, and they are the plastics uh, that you use to. Diploma questions and only test questions will hinge a lot on terms, vocabulary, sort of new classification of reactants and products. We're going to call those. Let's see the above monomers and polymers. The actual IUPAC names, the monomers would be named just like you've been learning through organic chemistry. So you might have that name as the monomer. If you want to see, you're going to have double bonds in the, in the addition of polymer to the study. The polymer IUPAC names aren't specific to exactly how big it is, it just tells you what polymer is making it up. So you say poly, and then you just write the monomer. So it's not specific, it's sort of a general classification. With tens of thousands of that being come together, we call it polyethane, regardless of the exact count. So addition of polymerization is going to be our first theme. We'll talk about condensation second. So addition polymers, you think addition chemistry that we've learned about in Chem 30, you have a double bond that's going to break. You know, I'm not going to show millions of units. I'm going to start with two and then expand two uh, to many, but it'll be the same pattern. We have our monomers, specifically ethene. In addition chemistry, we're going to break that second bond. That's the weaker one. The first bond's really strong, second one's weak, and you can get one monomer to link up a carbon carbon connection from one to the next. So I'm going to draw that and then we'll do many of them. We'll use what these do not teach with you, and of them to represent any large number. So our first monomer has two carbons in it. It's going to connect to our second monomer, which also has two in it, two carbons. That the molecule has four H's around those double bonds. Now at the end, each end, there is nothing there, at least in this example. That's where another monomer would add in. And eventually you would have to end the monomer, and we're not getting into what you would do to end polymerization. But this is the heart of our repeating pattern with just two units. I'll show. A better way to illustrate this, showing many, would be to say N of those, a whole bunch of ethenes. So the same example, you're breaking just that extra bond, not the first sigma bond, but the second phi one, and that breaks those two carbons like we drew above. There's always four connections around whatever 
we're adding an addition chemistry. And you're still going to see me in the following example switch up what's connected. At each side of the monomer where the double bond used to be is where future connections can be. This is the pattern that's going to repeat if we put two or three or four or five. We're going to see this over and over again. So one convention to show this repeating unit is to square bracket it. We have lines coming right out of it where it will repeat, and this will occur n times, whether n is a hundred or a thousand. <coughs> Monomer, as I said, is ethene. Our polymer is polyethene. That's the how you got name. The common trivial name, polyethene doesn't quite sound as nice. Polyethylene is not your high school name that you're going to memorize, not going to UPAC, but that's what the plastic industry refers to it as. You might maybe heard that name before. You're not going to get tested on this. This is beyond the scope of Chem 20 or Chem 30, sorry. But these are your number two and your number four recycling plastic codes. You may be seeing these at melt jugs or many containers. I'm making a connection, but this is not a testable connection. So that's our first plastic. We'll do a couple more. I'm going to start with just two. I've got three carbons. They're kind of bent down, but it's still one continuous chain. We have a couple proteins. And we're going to make polypropene out of it. Or, or at least when we put them in together. Now, there's always four things around the double bond. I want to circle those four, and that's what's got to show up in our repeating units or our products. We have an H, an H, an H, and then the last is a one carbon. I'm not going to circle it in the second monomer. We're going to have the two carbon that used to be part of around that are were part of, were around the double bond. H at the top, right H, we got the bottom, circle through H, and then we have this CH3. I'm going to change the physical properties of this plastic, having this kind of methyl group stuck down outside of the chain. I put two monomers here, so I have to repeat this twice. That's what happens when two of our units come together. Monomer makes polymer, specifically propene makes polypropene. And this is the number three plastic code. Typically, how you'd see this on an exam is just one unit. You have n of those. There's our two carbons that were around the double bond. If this is going to repeat n times, and I have to put in the Reagents and the single carbon. We'll do one more and then we'll get into some slightly more trickier sort of diploma type questions. The next styrofoam dominates our society, our packaging. We see it everywhere. Styrofoam comes from polystyrene. Now, styrene is a monomer you haven't learned the name of before, but it's aromatic. 
it's got a benzene ring with two carbons coming off the ring with a double bond. That is dystyrene. You break those double bonds and you start linking these units together and you get polystyrene. So now we have a lot of bulk to the piece that's coming off. We have H, 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 that's the same, but then we have this big bulky piece coming off. So we're just going to put those two units together. I won't do any of them in this example. So we have two carbons around where the double bond used to be. H, 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 and A benzene ring, and I'll use the circle format. I have a second monomer, so I have to write that again. that's a little bit cryptic about the name is the name often keeps the E in ending, which you have to realize the product is never been destroyed, but the name is coming from the bottom of that culture. These are your number sixes. You now they come in different densities. You can have a lot of air in them and you can make the styrofoam sort of packing chips you're used to, or Tim Horton lids are all the number six. They're just a much denser form of polystyrene. So these recycling codes are important, so when you do throw your plastics in a bin, the recycler knows how to sort them out and mix them. They know which ones they can mix and which types of polymers uh, they cannot mix. We'll get a little bit more creative. I'm not always going to put the names in. I'm going to do one more example going forwards, and then we're going to do an example going backwards, predicting the polymer from the polymer. So I'm going to mix, uh, I'm going to put bromine into our molecule, get a second monomer that's filled with chlorine. Now we can have this sort of alternating pattern between our monomers. I'll start there. So that's where I underline in red the R H H H, and then we've got that broken double bond. Something's going to have to add to that left hand side. We're not getting into what you're going to add to terminate this polarization. Then we have the other monomer that's going to add next, and that's filled with CL. We have the first monomer, we have the second monomer, and then this is just going to repeat over and over again. The chemists are always trying to figure out what monomers can they put together to maybe come up with something new. DuPont eventually came up, they used a fully fluorinated compounds, which is surrounded by X, and they made Teflon out of that. They're very non-stick. Last, let's work our way back. So I'm going to give a repeating unit and ask what monomer was used to make this. So we'd be expecting two carbons that used to have a double bond there that was broken. And the question is, what is that? 
and it can be a pretty straightforward question if you have a reasonable understanding of this. The key being, do you realize you have to have had an ene to have made this or any addition polymer? You're going to have two carbons. You're going to have a Cl, a Br, an H, and an H. And I want to do a typical incorrect answer. One of the wrong answers, they'll just stick some H's there. You'd hopefully identify A's don't do addition to the ligation. That doesn't make sense. That's not the correct answer. You need to have an E. You just need to put a double bond between those carbons. That's the correct monomer. <coughs> One bromo, two fluoro happy would make that polymer. Our second theme, there was a time that Alberta Ed liked to just put additional polymers on it, and this is what it really focused on. The diploma has way more condensation polymers and natural polymers. That'll be in a future lesson. So we really have to have a much broader understanding of polymers. Condensation polymers are the same chemistry that we saw in the ester reaction except for the monomers have not one, but two functional groups that can make an ester linkage. Two carboxyl groups in the acid, two hydroxyl groups in the alcohol. So they can add on both sides of the functional group and make a repeating chain. I'm going to put these two together to make a polymer. You would add n amounts. You'd add tens of millions or billions of nucleators to that a mole of, of each of these. You're going to get your connection. The hydroxyl group and the carboxylic acid is going to connect to the slightly positive carbon and the alcohol, just like we saw in our ester chemistry, and make an ester linkage. We're going to have use the line in the circle so I can use an aromatic ring in a space efficient manner. And we've got our C double bond O, our O, so we're right there. And then we're going to have a linkage to our alcohol. So I'm going to end up modifying this a little bit, taking some things off the end to show where the repeating pattern can occur on each end. So we have our ester linkage. You won't be doing balancing of these. Again, you'll be decoding examples. But there is a water produced with ever with every linkage. If you have n of these, this reaction is going to occur again at both ends. This NH is going to react. The OH uh, will come off, and you can add another alcohol on that side of the acid. So when that happens, you'll lose that. We're going to get a repeating pattern on that side. And on the other side, that hydroxyl group can react. You can lose that H. And you'll get a repeating pattern on that side. And this is going to happen an amount of times. So you're going to go acid, alcohol, acid, alcohol, acid, alcohol, acid, alcohol. And we keep repeating, and you're going to get about in waters. They should really stick out to you. If you get a repeating pattern from a polyester, 
you've got that O in the backbone of the repeating pattern that you don't have in addition polymers. So you see the O, you're trying to figure out, okay, where's my acid piece? Where's my alcohol piece? So I can identify the two monomers that made this up. So let's end with one more polyester, but we're going to go backwards. I'm going to draw the repeating pattern first. Show my bracket. And that repeats n times. And the question is, what two monomers made this up? Makes a nice multiple choice. Style question. So we're going to do some decoding of that polymer. The first thing I'm going to go and look for is where's that O in the backbone so I can find the two pieces. The carboxy, oh, sorry, the carbonyl, the C double bond O. That's going to be our acid side. The other side is going to be our alcohol side. I'll just use OL for alcohol. So let's fill back the monomer that must have been used to make that acid. So the acid has two carbons in it. We have to build a full carboxyl group. There's the full one built back on the right and on the left. That would give us our two carbon acid components. And of those on a test, you'd just be identifying the monomer, probably not worrying about the end. You need the alcohol, that's on the right hand side of my blue dash line. There's only one carbon in the alcohol. You have to correctly identify that there are two hydroxyl groups. So wrong answers will look right on the right carbon count, but they won't have the two hydroxyls, they'll have maybe just one as in an incorrect answer. So that is our polyesters. So make sure you know the vocabulary, make sure you can predict polymers from monomers, and make sure you can predict monomers going backwards from polymers. Don't get too worried about drawing this. You're, there's no drawing in your diploma. It's just being able to take the diagrams and work forwards or backwards uh, or name. Awesome.